Okay. Put me a little patch in here. But <clears throat> the main thing was I was mowing the other day and this thing kept running worse and worse and worse. And it got to where I had to pull the choke out. Get it to come to run just enough to get it home. And um I tore that carburetor off of there. Okay, now I've already got all that off, so I really can't show you the taking it off, but this is the float bowl. It's got a couple screws that holds it on. And that's just a little fuel shut off. This, you gotta watch because there's rings and there's slots there that, that fits down over top of like that. But this goes up onto a tube here that goes up into the carburetor. Okay, now this piece here is what fit down in the bowl. This part bolts to the carburetor and it goes together like that. And right there where they go together is where the o ring's supposed to seal. Now here's the o ring I took out of it. Okay? That o-ring goes over this. You can see there's no way. This piece here mounts up here to the carburetor. Okay? And there's a gasket there. Let me see if I can see that gasket. Okay, I lost the gasket, but right there the gasket is. That little funny looking one, there's the new one. It goes right in here. And that's screwed down. But then see there's two holes here. And that's where these little jets go in. And there's supposed to be an O-ring right here on the bottom of that jet. Well, when you put them in here, they should stay in there. Oh, let me get that in there. Okay, you see I got one jet pushed up in there and the other jet's missing still. When you take this off, they shouldn't fall out like that. If that O-ring is good, then it ought to stay up in there. So you don't want those O-rings leaking either. So what I done was I ordered two new jets because they already had the O-rings on it. I couldn't find the O-rings separate nowhere. And I ordered this plastic piece because this O-ring with the figure eight looking thing and the O-ring here where these go together, the one that was all messed up came with it for cheaper. So what I ordered was two jets, this and the gaskets for it. Okay, and you can see this is the O-ring that I took off and there's the new replacement O-ring. So there is quite a bit of difference. And this kit comes with the white piece, the couple screws, and there's the part number. Now, earlier models had a black piece in here, and they are a little bit different carburetors, so you got to make sure you know what part you have in there. Okay, now for the two jets with the O-rings. Right there they are. But if you notice, the part number on this one and the part number on this one are different. There's a right and a left jet in these Briggs engines. Alright. The 69733 is the right hand jet. And the 792296 is the left hand jet. So that is going to determine where you put these in. Okay, the next thing would be, how do I know which is right and which is left? Now if you roll this carburetor right over, right here on the top you see it has an R and an L for right and left. So this side of the carburetor, which would be this one here, would be the left jet. And this would be the right jet. Okay, left and right. They are different sized jets, so it's important to get them in there in the correct place. Now, I also had another part of this, this little black thing right here. There's a gasket behind that, and a lot of times the holes will get plugged up in it. Here's the one I took off, 
and you can see two of the holes are different size they were starting to get plugged up but it wasn't bad yet a lot of times when they have a bad problem running this gasket them holes will get plugged up in there and to get that out you got to take this screw and this screw out and it pulls this plate off of here in the shaft just slides out the side and you can see down there's one screw that takes that out and you can change that gasket now when I put these screws back in I usually put a dab of Loctite on them and one thing I don't have yet but there's like a little foam filter whatever you want to call it goes around this shaft that's a good thing to put back foam it's not really felt but anything to keep the dust out I guess so what I'm going to do now that I've got this carburetor all cleaned up is I'm going to go ahead and put this new white piece in there and that little gasket on the bottom and then I'll throw the jets in it now I just push that gasket up in the bottom of the white piece and that way it holds it if you see these ears to so the holes are offset so it's like that here too it only go on the one way and then you just put your two screws in there okay now I did go ahead and bolt this back you put these bolts in it's got this little like a washer that sits in these holes to intake first then you got a gasket that goes on and this piece here goes on and then the nuts go on the outside of that I'll show you that here in a second but anyway we got this all in there we're gonna put that float in there now you want to make sure that that hole in there looks good and clean and that the needle looks good which it does I've always been told most generally the tops of the float will set level so um, this is where it was at we're gonna go with it I'm sure there is a float adjustment and next thing I'm gonna do is put this fuel bowl on when you put the fuel bowl on you want to make sure that center where that o-ring is right there goes up in there and seals good so just be careful with it and make sure you have the solenoid wires pointing to the right direction so I guess the most important thing I wanted to say is remember if you're having a problem make sure those o-rings are good and make sure that gasket behind here is good now what we're going to do is we'll stick our gasket on here and then this is going to go on there and then the four nuts now I did put those four nuts on there and remember you're tightening up plastic here and like these any bolts going into this carburetor threaded into the carburetor itself the metal soft so snug these up but be careful because you can strip the threads out of the carburetor pretty easily kind of seems odd you can kind of see where that looks like that throttle shot or that linkage for that had been rubbing at one time or another hmm. all right well we're gonna put this back on there's a hole in the back of this your hose here goes into don't forget it so I'm going to go ahead and get these linkages on. This linkage down here at the bottom just hooks right here. That's really your only linkage now to put on. Okay, I know you guys didn't get to see much of the actual workings going on. My only concern is this metal right here, right over the exhaust. As long as this metal doesn't get too hot and start messing my plastic up, the hood modification will be okay. Um... I have had this thing started yesterday when I finished the carburetor but I was just kind of busy and didn't have time for the video and but one thing I did want to show is when I get a mower most the MTDs and stuff you'll find a sticker AYPs and all you will too but they're not always in the same place but if you look right here there's a number Okay, the model number. So what I do is I take that model number and I go to the computer. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll come here, and this one should come up because I've already done it here. I'll type that number into the Google. The first one here is 
for MTD. Now, if yours is an AYP or something like that, of course, you're not going to go to the MTD site. But with this MTD, see, I would show a picture of it. Over here, you got some, you got some ads. But over here, you got op operator's manuals. Um, you can go there and download the PDFs and get all the information that way, the breakdowns. Or, like here's Sears Parts Direct. Um, here's Parts Tree. Now with this one, you come here, I don't know if you can see, but just say the um, steering assembly will go to. As you can see here, it gives you a breakdown of the steering assembly with all the part numbers and everything like that. I hope you can see that. With all the parts numbers here in the list. And you can order from these guys. But there's numerous ways that you can take that model number off your um, riding mower, tiller, snow mower, whatever it is. And you can just Google search that and usually come up with a parts diagram, parts numbers, and stuff like that. Okay, we'll give it a little throttle. A little choke. Like I say, I had it running yesterday. Now, anytime you do something like that, you also want to check for leaks, which I have already done. Make sure there's nothing leaking. So let's just try it out.